Right. First of all, thanks a lot, uh, Arjuna and Chilika, for inviting uh, for this talk. And I hope I can uh, uh, do justice to myself. So my talk is all about my journey to Antarctica and what it really taught me about sustainability, because sustainability and climate change being the theme of this uh, workshop uh, of the TEDx at Shulin University. So in this 21st century, uh, I would like to say that most of the problems that we are facing right now uh, are basically global and scientific in nature. And these scientific problems really require scientific solutions. So many people have asked me, what is my view on the climate change or uh, GMO, the genetically modified organisms or uh, the nuclear energy and so on, you know, vaccines, for example, views, beliefs, immaterial in sciences, because science is based on objective reality that we tend to overlook at it. You know, beliefs and views have actually no place in it. So your beliefs are irrelevant in science. How about views on climate change? Those are immaterial for science. That much is certain. So scientists can only tell you what will happen if you jump from fifth story of a tall building. You know, of course, probability is quite high that you will die. But scientists can never tell you, do not jump. That's up to you. That purview doesn't come in the sciences, you know. So risk perceptions differ widely across the general public and the scientists on various scientific issues that are facing in this space age, the 21st century. Now, coming to the climate change, most of you might have thought that it's very, very slow process, so it doesn't pose much of the risk. It's a low risk. But friends, scientific consensus is that the climate change has entered to a domain of dangerous predicament, a point of no return. Uh, the science magazine called it as hothouse earth. The new paper argues that earth has entered a trajectory called hothouse earth. I have been to a place where most of you hadn't been. I'm privileged to be part of that, Antarctica, the final frontier. I was privileged to be part of the 36th Indian in national mission to Antarctica, you know, Indian Antarctic mission. So what did I see in Antarctica? You might wonder. Of course, I saw penguins, a plenty of them. Emperor penguin, Adelie penguin, chinstrap penguin, all varieties. Of course, other animals too. Only animal, only mammal in Antarctica is seal. Elephant seal and leopard seals. Squaw, snow petrel, terns, physical spectacles too, including glacial blue eyes, massive blue glaciers, ice caves, frazzles, fast ice, 22 degrees halo around the sun. Uh, you know, Aurora Australis too. Yes, I did see that, all of these. There is a flip side of this story. The flip side is the best kept secret of this white pristine continent. On the way to Antarctica, in the uh, Antarctic Ocean, I saw an island full of marine litter. You know, the plastics that you throw away, the final destination is ocean. And the thermohaline circulation make it converge into one big island full of marine plastics, friends. Uh, these plastics get degraded by so-called photolysis and degradation of the plastic result in something called microplastics. These microplastics, friends, leach out from this marine litter islands, do, uh, you know, gets into the biosystem, including the seabirds and even penguins, friends. There are research that shows that penguins, even the microplastics have been found in penguins. And what is the consequence? Same thing like in the human being, we see OS and infertility. Penguin populations are now diminishing or because of the microplastic use, you know? So what is the solution for it? You might wonder like, uh, you know, expensive eco-friendly stuff is the best solution for it, right? Uh, probably you are using, I don't know, bamboo water bottle, a water bottle made up of bamboo. You can get it in Amazon or wooden toothbrush because toothbrush is plastic. So let us go get out of this. I want to project myself with a eco-friendly image. Let me get a wooden toothbrush, you know, or I call this as urban vanity. It doesn't work that way. Or armchair philosophical preachers, they argue for innovation. Government should for innovative products, developing expensive eco-friendly products that are affordable only for the affluent people in, in, the, in the world. There is no point in going for that. Or investing in academic research on plastic degrading bacteria, spending crores and crores of rupees uh, on so-called research on uh, plastic degrading because we already have plastic problem. Let us degrade a solution for that problem. No, it doesn't work, friends. There is a concept in philosophy called Oxham's razor. So Oxham's razor is a mental model. 
So simple solutions are most elegant. That is what it is. It's, it's pretty much used in AI, artificial intelligence, and regression algorithms, the dog's and razor. Just carry a reusable mug and cutlery. Solution is solved. Most of the solution is solved. Reusable shopping torte. Uh, you know, I don't even argue for going for a cloth. Even plastic is absolutely fine. Plastic is not inherently bad. Using it multiple times is a key. Just using and throwing is the problem. Yeah, you know, see, there is a, some, a concept called life cycle assessment in environmental sciences. Not many of us are aware of it. Cloth bags, you know, cotton cloth bags are worst for the environment rather than plastic bags if you use it multiple times. We should understand that. It's a very low cost solution. Just use the same bag a large number of times. Incidences of algal blooms are increasing. Antarctica is now greenifying because of the global warming. That is exactly what you can see in Antarctica these days. I have taken several helicopter rides. That is what I use, uh, you know, we use to travel from one location to another. And from the helicopter reconnoiture missions, we can see the pristine white carpeted ice sheet. And we could also see glacial meltwater lakes, blue color, deep blue lakes everywhere in this continent. So Antarctica, friends, not only serves as a showcase of the climate change. Climate change is real. You can really feel it if you go to Antarctica. But also, it, it also serves as an untouched museum specimen that enables us to study uh, the climate change. You know, scientists like us, why we are going to Antarctica to study how the climate is changing. You know, Antarctic ice core is just like a bore well. We drill and retrieve the ice, the core of the ice. You know, that enables us to study uh, what the past climate that is called paleoclimatology, you know, because uh, when this Antarctic ice sheet formed in the Eocene epoch, approximately 45.5 million years ago, uh, you know, the, the, it has trapped relics of the past climate in the air bubbles. So we just have to take out the air bubbles, inject in uh, LCMS, that is liquid crystallography, uh, you know, the mass spectrometer, and then it can tell you how much is the CO2 level during that time. And you can take the gradations in each depth profile, you know. So that is how the scientific consensus is that CO2 level is really increasing. And also, if you look at the oxygen isotope ratio, it will tell you what was the temperature uh, when this ice sheet had been formed. So all these evidences point to the same direction. Accelerated global warming uh, post-industrial revolution is mostly man-made, you know. So now the million dollar question is how to save the planet. So who, whose responsibility is to fight the climate change? Many people will say it is IPCC, you know, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change or governments across the world. It's their duty or big, big corporations, you know, friends, not at all. You know, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, that is UN SDGs. We should bring that into the personal life. So sustainability at the individual level is the key. That is what I believe in. I remember a quote by Seneca, be the user, but not the slave of the gifts of the fortune. Think we, our days are numbered. We have limited time in, on this planet earth, you know? So think that every single possession that you have, it's not you are the owner. You're just taking it as a gift uh, from the, the fortune or the nature. Another quote by Marcus Aurelius, my, one of my favorite quotes is that things that we treasure are like leaves on a tree. You know, it's, it's never, uh, nothing is permanent in this world, you know. So my, one of my favorite uh, tools, which I always advocate for everybody to follow is bicycle commuting, because bicycle commuting is the easiest and simplest step towards minimizing our carbon footprint. You know, and last year alone, I cycled 3,498 kilometers. It has come in newspaper too. What does that mean? 3,498 kilometer means it is offsetting 680 kilogram of car, uh, carbon, carbon dioxide had I been traveling in a, in a normal sized car. You know, so 680 kg of carbon I offset it and I'm really proud of it. So my own lifestyle changes include not wearing jeans, have you ever thought genes environmental impact? Yes, tremendous impact. Lycra, the microfiber, and also the impact due to the, the dye. Environmental degradation in some of the cities in China is extremely polluted because people are wearing the denim cloths. Think about it. If you're wearing jeans, think twice before wearing it. Or composting, I started composting now, organic composting, and shifting to energy efficient appliances. 
here in India, in BSI star rating five star. Uh, get the every appliance is five star. What's the problem? Even though you are spending a little bit, uh, you are spending for the environment. And shifting from cooking, uh, you know the normal cooking, the whatever the pressure cooker to steam cooking. You know it is much more nutrient efficient as well as energy efficient. The carbon footprint is so much lesser if you cook with the steamer. And also instead of ironing the cloth, use a steaming steamer for the, the the ironing. You know instead of ironing, just use a steamer. Or bar soap, you know, instead of uh, uh, the the aqua, you know, whatever the the uh, the shower gels, that is nothing but aqua is nothing but water. You are paying huge amount for the water, but more than that, all these things are coming with a single use, use and throw disposable plastic. All this end up in the ocean, friends, causing harm uh, to the penguin population. The microplastic, remember. And also for the instead of uh, uh, the the shampoo that comes in plastic bottle, I just use uh, a, a shampoo bar. You know, very less packaging. It's really good for the environment. And minimizing the purchase is number one solution for most of this plastic crisis, as well as the sustainability. To achieve the sustainability, number one recommendation would be step towards zero waste. You know, minimize the waste. So the purchase less will lead to uh, waste will be automatically less. You know there is another quote, very famous quote by Seneca, the the Stoic philosopher. If you live your life in harmony with the nature, you will never be poor. If you live life according to what others think, you will never be rich. See how profound the quote is. So if you live harmony with nature, you will never be poor. You know. So there is another philosophical concept called via negativa. So via negativa exactly resonates this thought. Remarkable progress in our life can be achieved by not doing uh, the things you know that that actually cause the harm. So that that is what the, the lifestyle changes. We really have to incorporate a lot of lifestyle changes. That itself will be a, a huge cure, you know, a solution for this uh, climate crisis. You know, instead of spending thousands of crores of the rupees for to clean up the dirty rivers, so we should spend it to stop the pollution from happening. So if we actually do that, the upper Ganges uh, valleys, you know, if we stop the Ganges river from polluting, then the the pollution will automatically stop instead of cleaning up the river. So that cleaning up the river is not a viable solution, friends. I had an ultimate sustainability experience, a zero waste. I'm a big advocate of zero waste, but my ultimate sustainability, uh, you know, experience was also in Antarctica, friends. You know, in Antarctica, as you know, the temperature goes as low as minus seventy-nine degrees Celsius. Nothing can grow in that temperature. No bacteria can grow. How about waste? You might uh, wonder what is uh, how is the toilets in Antarctica looks like? Excrements, the human excrement. If you throw it out, millions of years, it will be there uh, without decomposing because decomposing bacteria cannot live at that low temperatures. You know. So, friends. while returning we brought every single waste of us including the excrement we packed the excrement in the barrels and we brought home here in india you know so that really taught me that how to minimize the waste and how to incorporate sustainability to a personal level how to align our life to the 17 uh, united nations sustainable development goals the sdgs where most of the academicians simply preach i can also preach for hours and hours what the 17 sdgs are all but the the point is that just like what gandhi says my life is my message bring it to your life show to the world that through the actions not just by mere speech you can do it see remember we spoke about the risk perceptions right earlier when when i began this talk we were talking about the risk perceptions many climatologists friends of mine uh, they can't even sleep at night <laughs> you might wonder what is what is going going on with the climatology friends they are worried they are really worried because the climatologists geologists now they predict that earth's major geologic event is now going to be the complete meltdown of antarctica due to the global warming friends and what are the repercussions and when this is going to happen next 50 years if the trends goes by within next 50 years we are going to lose antarctica the pristine white continent and what is the the impact of it it would raise the global sea level by at least 2.5 meter even 1 inch you know or 3 cm is enough to displace 
hundreds of kilometers, you know, so it's going to have uh, a, a tremendous impact. Almost entire uh, cities, the coastal cities will be submerged and displacing billions of the human population because most of the human population live uh, in the coastal regions. Antarctic ice sheet also store almost 98 percentage of the fresh water of our planet Earth and melting and you know dissolving into the, the global oceans will have another serious ramifications including you know Earth's tilt, the axial tilt might also be that is what the climatologists are now predicting you know. Uh, remember jumping from fifth story uh, fifth floor of the tall building, you know, the scientists are informing the same about the climate change right now. Today, scientists are informing us what is going to happen soon. So the climate change is just like slow growing cancer fronts. By the time the cancer is detected, it might have already spread to multiple organs, you know, stage four cancer. Right now, we are nearing the stage four cancer of the climate change. Not many people are talking about the climate change. At the start of every disaster movie, there is a scientist being ignored. To ignore or not is an individual choice. The choice is up to you to ignore the science or go with the science. Remember, there is no viewpoint or belief in science. Science is only for objective reality. So my voyage to Antarctica has taught me why minimizing carbon footprint and waste through the lifestyle changes is the key to the sustainability and the climate action. Why bringing United Nations sustainable developmental goals to the personal level is a need of the hour. Thank you so much.